Remember when you and I were at Pipe on the North Shore and uh, the guy from Transformers was there? Yes. Yes. I'm so into what you're saying. Can yeah. you hold on one second, Mark? Because yeah, I've always yeah. asked you to hold are for you, a long are you time. Are me? Yeah. No, this isn't about you. It's not always about you, Mark. Tell Kelly Slater. You can is, wait, okay? This is, yeah. This is, you know the, this is the world champ, current world champ. Yeah, I'll just text with Jesus. Can we do our... Oh, for you. well, I'm going to yeah. text the father. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, in Aloha. It's Mark Sawyer Chu. And AJ Ellerington. Together, we'll be hosting the Christian Surfers Podcast. Where we talk Jesus. And talk with surfers that love Jesus. Tune in to hear some amazing stories. Mark, here's, the, here's yeah. the thing, Mark. Yes. First of all, what podcast are we on right now? I have no idea. Monty, what podcast is this? Yeah, this is this we, the Bad Dads podcast. This is the Christian <laughs> Surfers Talk Story Go Deep and Go Wide podcast with Brian Jennings. We've both gone wide. We both had kids. The, 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 dad, the dad bot is real. I'm just oh being real God. here. Let's show oh, that's the right? way. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I, you, when you and I met, we both had six packs. <sighs> And and <sighs> we, we now have mini kegs, um, but we're just getting older, Brian. That's the reality. So, Mark, of it. thank you for the name of the podcast. Um, secondly, <laughs> go wide and go deep. Secondly, walk, yeah, go wide and go deep. Okay. Yes. So, yes. so here's the thing. Yes. You know, when you read the Bible, yeah, Jesus would, would be asked these questions, almost yeah, like a sure. podcast situation. Yeah. And you know what was really really punk rock about Jesus? He uh, wouldn't he wouldn't always answer the question. He'd ask, he'd actually answer the question with another question. So I just want to warn you today, yeah, as you ask me questions, don't answer it. I might pull a Jesus thing and like just, just flip the script, flip it and actually yeah. ask you a question. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so but what if <laughs> I pulled the Jesus thing too and answered your question to my question with another question? Then yes. we're, then we're going to be questioning. <laughs> All right. Here we go, guys. You will get no answers on this podcast, <laughs> just a bunch of questions. But we're going to leave it up to you. And as Brian Jenny no, said, right. read your Bible, and that's where you'll get your answers. Guys, welcome. We have a very, very, very special guest on the episode today. Very busy. Yes, he's behind you. <laughs> hey. Um, a few moments later. Yeah. 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 I, f I feel bad about that, Mark. Like, yeah. we, sh we should know each other better. Yes. Let me ask, answer that with a question. Okay. What did you have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> this is going so This is going back. How many, how many podcasts have you done, Brian? <laughs> oh yeah. You've been on Drew Rogan. Oh, my you've been, uh Is this the worst one you've been on? So far, it's going pretty terribly. <laughs> yeah. This is why the title <laughs> of this one's called Awkward. Awkward oh in the Kingdom gosh. of God. One eternity later you were the founder of walking on water you were instrumental in christian surfers you gave us the tools you came and spoke uh we were like your gorilla st street team you gave us the tools with the dvds and then media change and we had to get rid of those eight tracks and vhs tapes and dvds and now it's all digital yeah, yeah. Uh, but you gave us some amazing titles follow the <laughs> leader changes let me see if I can do all of them. Walk on Water, um, Blind Surfer. Beyond Sight. Beyond Sight, yes. Cowboys. Surfers and, surfers and Cowboys. Surfers and Cowboys. I was close. Did I miss any there? Yes. If not, there, people can log on to IMDb, even though there's more. some young people don't know what that is. Promised Land. Todd, Promise Todd Land Moorhead. Huge, Todd Moorhead directed one. that. Yes. Um, about Israel. That was great. Yeah, mm -hmm. great one. And, and a few others. So, yes, lots of, lots of movies. Yeah. And then... Um, what, but yeah, I agree with you. you. Here, here's what here's what's been. I mean, it's been one of the most incredible things I've ever been able to be a part of. Is that seeing what God has done with Christian surfers around the world, and just watching. You know, Brett Davis Get talks. About, Brett, well, yeah, and Brett Davis talks about like he's like I didn't know what was going on. All I know is I just started this thing called Christian Surfers in Australia, and then it just started growing and growing and growing. And then the, and then there are chapters all over the world. And then and then. I, here I come as a pro surfer and then as a Christian and I'm like, I want to share my faith. I'm tired of all these surf movies. They're like, hey, be a pro surfer and party. You're going to be so yes. stoked. And it's like, bro, I did that for three years in high school and was yeah. so empty that I was yeah. like, there's, I had all of it. I had everything you want. Yeah. All the parties, all the girls, all the stuff. Like, and I was like, I'm sorry, there's got to be something more going on here. And so I ended up receiving Christ gotcha. into my life. 
Yeah, God-shaped hole, all that. And three days after I received Christ into my life, he gives me all the waves miraculously, and I win a contest on Saturday, a pro surf contest in La Jolla. And then on the, and then my friends were like, what the heck just happened? I'm like, I don't know, I prayed to receive Christ the other day, like three days ago, and he made the ocean, and he just blessed me, and I won this thing. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm like, what? And they're like, go to Huntington Beach tomorrow. So then the next day I go to Huntington Beach, same thing happens. I get all the waves, every heat, I win the event. In two days, I won two pro contests. I'm like, what? I couldn't even win at NSSA. And I'm winning right. pro contests. Two weeks later, same thing. I get second place in the Caton Pro-Am. I'm like, what is going on? I almost won the Caton. Like You're this just whole climbing the challenge. Like, ah! Yeah, it was just insane. It was just, but like, but all that happened for for an eternal purpose. And there were two, there were a couple of reasons. One was God was kind of showing off, like, hey, like when I when I want to give you something, I'm gonna give it to you. And it's going to actually be really hard to receive because it's going to be so good. And you, you're you going to know you don't deserve it. Yeah. And it's actually really hard. I don't think you've ever been given a gift that's like, wow, like what are you doing giving that to me from somebody or from God? But that's how I felt. And then secondly, it launched this like this like passion in me to go, man, I want to go share my faith. Like I don't want to just. I don't want to just be another pro surfer and God just did that. So like, I want to let everyone know, like it was him, it was him, it was him. You know, every time I got on the scaffolding, it was like, just yeah. want to thank Jesus. Like yeah. who else am I going to thank? Like he made the ocean. He made me, he allowed me to win. Like, I don't know. Like, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. It's just a no brainer. That's what I love about Felipe Toledo. You know, yeah. it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Like that's, I don't know who else to thank. Like he's that's the it. one, he's the one who gave me. So then I make, start making these movies, right? You guys, are doing Christian surfers, everyone's doing Christian surfer chapters around the world, just organically, cool stuff, like free food, come over to our house, and then let's go surf, and let's just have this like thing where we all hang out and get to know each other as community. It's really like, the, it's really what a church should feel like, that's what church should be. Yeah. Um, Francis Chan, he left yeah. his big church so he could go and do small churches yes. in houses because he, basically he left church to do Christian surfers everywhere, basically right. is what he did. So. All that. So then I, I then go, okay, I'm going to just do what God's telling me to do, which is let's go make a movie. We go make a great movie. We focus on a good movie, make it good. What was your Excellent. first movie? It was called Follow the Leader. We had no faith in, no faith, just Christian music. And then, um, and then, but I was bummed about that. I, I, I wanted there to be testimonies. Yeah. And the guys that were working on it with me, they were like, let's just, let's just make it, um, Let's just have it. I have no testimonies, but like Christian music. And I was like, uh, well, you guys are paying for it. So, okay. Yeah. And then after that, I just didn't feel right. So I was like, yeah. no, no. From you wanted to throw some switch foot. Let's, let's, yeah. let's go. Let's go big time. So the next movies, we all had somebody's powerful testimony, their story. So then we go, we make the movie and then we go, we go to show the movie. Yeah. And then uh, Mike Doyle was a big part of that, my outreach director, because he then started coordinating and he started just seeing like, oh, if we work with this person in that city, that person in that country, you know, they'll set up events. And next thing you know, like That's we ended right. we ended up with 500,000 people because of Christian surfers, a local other churches and ministries and partners, Mike Doyle, my, our staff, everybody that was involved. It's like unbelievable. We ended up with 500,000 people in live nice attendance stuff. in all these events and lots of businesses yeah. started, yeah. marriages happened. People obviously yeah. became follow, followers of Christ. You that got through you, your one of your movies. There you go. Yeah. Marriage, marriage, right there. And those those are the kind of things. It's just like, what's better than that? When God works through you, and the stuff you're doing, and then He teams you up with other people that are doing what they're supposed to be doing, yeah. and then all this amazing stuff just happens. And it's not journey, it has nothing to do with me. It has no, it's everything that He did through all of us. And it's just you know, those have been my favorite moments in life. Is when I've seen. And even especially right now, yeah. it's actually really cool. You asked me like what I'm doing now. So I'm working on a Hollywood film called okay. Kids on the Wall. Yes, It's a coming of age story. Uh, all these past films have been documentaries. And so everyone knows the difference, but like, you know, that's like people talking and telling you their story. And then you, and, and then a feature film, a Hollywood production like this, it's scripted, there's acting, um, hopefully the actors that you recognize. And a lot of times it can be, it, it can be, some people prefer documentaries and some yeah. people prefer a Hollywood type film, but I've always wanted to do this. My great grandfather has three Academy Awards and his brother wow. does too. And so it's in my blood. I'm like, okay, let's go. So for the last three years of my life, I've been working with my partner, Roger, writing partner, writing the script, meeting with Hollywood producers, meeting with investors, getting this thing ready. 
and it's coming and I am super excited to go make this thing this year. Hopefully we'll be filming in Hawaii as early as February, March. If the, if slash when the fun, by faith, I'm going to say when the funding yes. comes Come in on. the next six weeks. So I think investors need to, and donors need to give and invest at the end of a year. So we're okay. October. So I'm hoping that October, November, December, this thing gets funded. We go make this movie. And now we have this big, huge, amazing, fresh, walking on water style movie, yeah. like, but like times a thousand um, with star potential greats. So the story is incredible. So like, yeah. it, it's gonna be a movie that like general audience is gonna wanna see. And I, 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 I have a sneaky feeling that God's about to do more than we could ever imagine through this movie. Amen. And I think it's gonna then, it's, it's cool because like you were saying earlier, what's going on in every one of these guys are just at this conference are so amazing. I love them so much. And like yeah. they're from all 40 different countries and they're doing what they're doing in their towns and their cities. I just got back from Brazil yesterday. Yeah. And it's like, you just, you, you know, that's what's going on in their, their town, their city, the, their friends and their people that they want to see come to know the Lord and get blessed. And, and, and then here comes this movie. And what's fun yeah. is I get to come in with like, like the weapon. It's like, hey guys, here comes yeah. the weapon. You're you know, like the Christian bazooka. Christian bazooka, yeah. and we're coming in with this um, this story, that this this excuse, this reason mm -hmm. to show up on the beach with a big screen at a movie theater, whatever your church, your house. I, I I'd love to see like a like hundreds of house screenings where you have like 50 friends over. It's like come yeah. see kids on the wall, and like boom, just put up a screen. You got food everywhere, and it's like by the way. After this movie, hope you like it, and I think they will. They 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 see the movie like what? This is insane. And it's based on my story, but me and my buddies is a coming of age story. But like the point is, this main character is wrestling with God, and do I want God in my life? And 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 what does that even mean? And it's very real and very authentic. So when when hundreds of thousands of people watch this movie, yeah. They're going to hopefully be like, I want what that Austin, his name will be Austin in the movie. Okay. What's that Austin character? Like, I want what he has because yeah. he went through that journey. He was willing to go through that karate kid style yeah. journey. So I want that. And it's like, okay, well, do you? Because if you do, we have a program for you. Surf yeah. Alpha, three month program. Amen. And come over to my house. We're going to make you food and we're going to watch a really cool video and we're going to just ask questions, yeah. questions and questions, and we're gonna learn what we can learn about the basics of who God is and if you really do want him in your life and if you really do believe in him. It's very real and authentic and not churchy at all. And so I would Love be, it. and I am go, I'm so excited because I know this is coming. I know this is like the next wave that God's sending all of us. He, he, had, he had Christian surfers as an organization um, all over the world and in the US uh, how would I say it? Um, reorganize, reassess, take a step back, mm -hmm. go, what have we been doing that was good? What have we been doing that was not good? What is going on in this world right now? And how, what is the new wine that's going to be in these new wine skins? So like the Bible talks about, if we, I'm going to give you new wine, but we need new wine skins. Like we need, this is going to be, a, so I feel like this is like a new wave coming through this movie and through what God's doing in all of our lives, all the, all the, Christian surfer leaders in the world, I believe God's been refining them and blessing them and changing them and pruning them. So scripture, a lot of people don't like to talk about, which is um, if you bear fruit, he will prune you so that you'll bear more fruit. Yeah. So it's like, hey, when you're, so be in surf language, we'll talk surf language, you're shredding. Yeah. If you shred, mm. <laughs> I am going to kick your beep, but, um, <laughs> for the next three months or the next year. Yeah. Why? Because you shred. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't be working with you. You right. shred, kid. So because you shred, and because you're doing speed floaters and you got some good flow, you yeah. got some good airs, um, hey, uh, you have potential. So here's what we're gonna do. Because you have potential, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you into shape. I'm gonna train you. And so God's been training all of us. Yeah. And Great he's done analogy. that. Thank you. Thank you for saying thank you. And... <laughs> That was from the thank you, man. Yeah, I'll tell you about him later. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. He's a good guy. Um, thank you. So 
that's what's coming. This new wave's coming. Love it. And it's going to be bigger than ever. It's like Nazare. Like Nazare's yeah. coming. Yeah. We all got to get the tow rope. I just yeah. towed two days ago in Brazil for my yeah. first time. Never towed before. Slap. I'm like, oh. Yeah, it was like, you know, it wasn't that big. It was like 20 foot faces to a slab that's pretty, that's pretty big. spitting. Yeah. And, um, and I pulled into one and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make it. And I yeah. fully made it. Yeah. None of that was true. I just said it was yeah. five feet. But yeah. I was going, yeah. in my mind, it was 20. It was 20 and it was insane. <laughs> yeah. I love it. We're the same. Yeah. 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 But the point is like, we're all about to get towed into a wave and God, and here's, here, here's something that has been on my heart. Why did Moses have to hang in the desert for 40 years before he went? Why, why did Joseph have to go to prison and, and hang out with Potiphar and get hit on by Potiphar's wife? And he is a slave to Potiphar and all this stuff. Why did Joseph have to go through all that? Why did Moses have to go through all that? Why did why did Gideon have to go through everything before the angel showed up and said, you're a mighty warrior? And he's like, I'm a farmer. But he got, God knew he was going to be a mighty warrior. Yeah. The, the answer is God was preparing Moses and preparing Joseph for when he was going to show up to him and say something absolutely psychotic. Are you kidding me? Like, we don't think about it. God said to Moses, go back to the guy that could kill you and wants to kill you mm -hmm. and the leader of the world, basically, and just tell him to, to you know, set all of them free. Just ask, yeah. just go ahead and go into his chain, go into where the king is and just ask right. him. Dude, that's like suicide. Right. So Moses needed 40 years to hear what God was going to say. And so God's going to say to all of us something that doesn't totally make sense. He's going to ask you to maybe it's something in your life that he's wanting to train you on or change or do or whatever or sometimes it's like no no just get ready because we're about to it's about to this whole thing's about to happen whatever god's about to do so i believe in this in this world that we're all in right now i'm really excited because i believe that he's been working this it's his movie and he's, yeah. he's he's making kids on the wall he's getting it ready and this movie is going to be insane like so good and i can't wait and then i believe that it's going to for sure uh, impact hopefully every surfer in the world and then overflow from that to a general audience would be great. I mean, I'd, I'll be surprised if one of the big streamers doesn't pick it up, you know, right. um, like Blue Miracle about an orphanage in Mexico. That movie was picked up by Netflix and was seen by 300 million people in three weeks. So like that's, wow. the, that's the world we're living in right now. So if you go, when we go make an incredible film, yeah. we, have a, we have a grassroots strategy that I have in my brain, which is everything we did in the past, but morphed into this new world we live in. And then like, how can we do even more? And if we actually had money that's, that we will have to like put behind it, like what is that gonna look like this next round? So super excited to see what's about to happen. And um, it's like, it's like now, it's like, it's yeah. like, this is like, this is like, it's like when you check the way the surf line, and it's like, and you and you you go to check today, and it's like, I in, love all these surf analogies, by the way. In two yeah. weeks, it's gonna be massive and perfect. Yeah, you're like, oh my, or a buddy calls you and says, hey, here's the deal. Um, I got you paid up. You, I got your trip paid for. We're going to Indo, and it's gonna be perfect. Yeah, that's where we are right now. I love it. Well, we are so stoked for this project, Brian, and we love everything that you've done. We need to be praying for this. Uh, since we finally got on a serious note yes. from from the uh, goofiness in the beginning. I did want to ask you what what has been the hardest part of um, closing down, shutting down, walking on water? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it all I always said that walking on water didn't make sense. Being a believer does it shouldn't make it's not, it's not supposed to make sense. Mm -hmm. Like we're supposed to live by faith, not by sight. Yeah. Um, and so walking on water didn't never made sense. Like what I mean by that is. We never had the money we needed. Like we didn't have some business plan that made sense. It was, it was always a miracle that that it existed and that God provided through incredible people the donations we needed to to be able to make a living and to be able to make the movies, to host the surf camps, host events all over the world. So, I always, whenever I, when when you're carrying that, I didn't realize what I was carrying. Like as the leader of that, and like I mean, there were some people that would help me fundraise, but not a lot to be honest. So I mean. I, was I having, tried and I felt miserably. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you for trying. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's hard. And so um, I, yeah, so I, I, um, I just, oh, so my point was I had to get, I had to like play a mental trick on myself. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, whenever, whenever, which was often 
money wasn't there and we needed it, I would just say, I would just say it's like, kind of like say to God, hey God, like this is your thing. It doesn't make sense. You've allowed us to do it for 23 years. So wow. whenever you want it to stop, then just turn off the, the hose of finances and then I'll just, the world stop. Yeah. If you want us to keep doing it, then please provide what we need to go keep doing this. Um, and he would just always show up, always show up. So finally there came a moment at the end of 2018 and there was the end of the year fundraising campaign. We'd always do it yep. and we were already short. We really needed it to come in this time and it just didn't, it just did not come in. The money did not show up. And so at the same time was when my wife at the time, Corinne and I were going through a really hard time mm -hmm. and basically divorce was was headed our way and and it all hit at the same time so wow. um what was the hardest time for me like hardest part for me was you know min ministry and movies and walking on water and and all that is all of that but your family is what's most important you know yeah. and family is like i've I just wanted to have a family, you know? So, yeah. so, and I was just trying so hard for my, to make the family work and to like, no, no, we can make this work. And I like, I mean, you've seen, like we're talking about movies and things. I championed every one of those movies. I mean, there are a couple that like Nick McLean and a few other guys did their movies and I helped them finish their movies. But like somehow God's given me the strength to like, let's just power through this, let's go, you know? Like someone had yeah. to do that. Like, so we just, to, to get it Fly going. Flag. Yeah, and, and so I just applied that. I was trying with that same, same amount of effort to like yeah. hey let's make this family work like we can whatever i need to change whatever you need to change like let's make it work and you know obviously i'm not going to go into details of stuff with you know with yeah. with this because you know the public doesn't need to understand everything that's going on what, what that went on with us or whatever but yeah. at the same time like um how would i just in general sum it up i guess i'd say there's got to be two people that are willing yeah. And so there's got to be two two people. And and yeah. if there's two people that are willing. Divided house cannot stand. Yeah. You have to both be like, hey, we're doing this, you know. And so, and you know, I was. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, too, is like, I'm far from perfect. And so, like, the God, God just. Oh, we know. Pruned. Right there with you. you know, he just pruned me and showed me things in my life that really needed to go. And I'll tell you, I know what one of the biggest ones was. It actually was. It's weird because I never really thought I was like this, but one of them was being religious. And I think it's pretty impossible to be in around the church and in the church world and not be religious. And like what I mean by that is like. We have that religious spirit. Yeah, there's just a religious spirit. And there's just like there's like a, there's I don't know, um, like, for, for example, when it came to dealing with the family situation and I would encourage anybody listening to this that's in a marriage or going to be or anything. Look. Like I have friends right now. Like, I've been married for 19 years and, and I'm so miserable and I hate it and blah, blah, blah. And like, what do you, but what do you think? What do pastors think about divorce? And I was like, you know what? That's the wrong question. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the wrong question to even be asking. You wanna know what I think what Jesus or God would be saying right now? He'd be saying the same thing I'm saying, which is I'm so sorry that you're not, that you're so miserable for 19 years. That's not how a marriage should feel, man. Some people won't like this one, but he said, if you're hot or if you're not hot or cold, I'm gonna spit you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah. that was to believers. That was to yeah. the church. So like, I'm just saying, I don't know what, it, what I don't want to give my perspective on marriage and divorce and when divorce and all that. I will just say this, God, if you read the Bible, God's way more radical than we ever think. So he, he's not going to give you a little light way out. He doesn't give you <laughs> an easy way out of like, oh yeah, divorce is cool. Yeah, yeah you're miserable, just go. No, he's, he's going to say, dude, make sure that you whatever's going to happen in the end of this situation make sure that you've done everything you possibly could yeah. to know that you did everything you possibly could and then at that point at least you'll know that and that was that's what i share with anyone that's having a hard time like just go and do everything you can and and just hold on because it's going to be hard and then and then be honest about what's on their side what's on your side and then and then go okay god like what can we do here like what can we do like there's this there's this these are two separate people we're all imperfect, so it's going to be hard. Anyway, so well, I we appreciate you being yeah. real. We know this is a reality that's always out there that not many people talk about. And I'm glad that we could get real on this podcast because it's, it's yeah. real life. Yeah. And, um, and I know that you and I are far from perfect, but that doesn't negate um, 
the stuff that God has done in our lives. Yeah. And, and yeah. amazing projects and events yeah. and people that we've been able to uh, work on and no. work together so and love cool. on together. Richard just got back from traveling and he came back and he was just like, Brian, you have no idea the impact that all the movies and things made around the world. And Still. Just so cool yeah. to hear that, you know, and I really feel like that was God going, it wasn't like, it's not really to build, I mean, we all need to be built up and reminded and encouraged. So I did need to hear it, but it was, it was mostly. That's speaking of Rich. <laughs> speaking of Richard. Yeah. 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 He must've heard you. Yes. I'm going to jump in because you've got another one. You got one in CU. Okay. So should we Look. close this out? Close it out. Get Let's a finish, a finish route. Cause yeah. Okay. We were just talking about surfing the whole time. Anyway, <laughs> anyway nothing. Anyway. Deep. Yeah, nothing deep or so, anything. Yeah. So get a, a, closing, a okay. closing shot. Cool. Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, what an amazing and authentic and genuine time with Brian Jennings. Brian, thank you so much for opening up. And uh, we're so blessed to have you here at the Christian Surfers Conference. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Keep tuning in for more Christian Surfers Talk Story. Go wide, go deep podcast, and we'll see you soon. Click see here to subscribe. You.